and the full walkthrough for, uh, to these uh, nice new firmware, the MM32, uh, that AI Live has really uh, done a great job on. And, and so, yeah, you see already here both slaves, uh, serial data. You need these two LEDs, and um, that's because uh, a diode, and because both uh, slaves are directly connected uh, to one UART, that's this remote UART bus. Uh, that I have introduced and yeah uh, okay let's so do it all again uh, let's pull the plug of the ESP32 turn it off and okay uh, now we need to install uh, the firmware and there are two of them and and so you see you need the pin finder first uh, it's uh, windy outside now sorry so uh, then open double click copy find a nice folder and paste And uh, directly uh, continue here with the main branch. Okay, I have to explain. You see, with the old firmware, uh, we have here this uh, board identifier, and then you, uh, okay, we have the three uh, chips, uh, three face, and, and, and then the MM32, and then, okay, here it's this board, and, and then you. Uh, have the sport number and based on this I have to provide lots of binaries and here is the problem you see there was no longer three face ca uh, face cables with nice colors and so you uh, don't know which face to detect uh, connect anyway uh, and, and here you see it's with this pin finder you, the, the setup is you make the hardware and then you first install here uh, with uh, yeah. This is ST flash, the pin finder, you make a full run through and you could, I think, connect a, a speaker to, to an LED and if suddenly the speaker makes a buzzing noise, you could uh, um, decide that this uh, LED pin is going to be the buzzer pin. And so you see, it's, uh, there's different uh, UART uh, to connect and so here they choose only two binaries. Uh, that can do every board but you have to yeah you will see now so let's start with the pin finder you see i now um still because it's still um, in development uh, i've installed kyle which you can also do quite easy to install it's free and uh, you have to register as an email and then here you have really to take care there are three targets and uh, you have to choose your target because otherwise uh, the board might break and it's it's lost and here it's this, uh, the cheapest one the 32 uh, kilobyte version we have chosen and then well f7 and le let's start to compile uh, we still get four errors and four warnings because he has not uh, what's beeping here? Oh, okay, that's later. And so let's first go to the four arrows. Uh, when you do it, you uh, he hasn't yet uh, updated uh, the, the software pack, and, and therefore uh, there is uh, this. And now we have. <coughs> zero warnings yeah he no longer cares okay now we have to flash and so uh, how do we do this uh, let's see uh, this is a flash and i can connect it to the master so let's say okay no longer power uh, the the slave that's why I did show you here. Um, the slave does awake if the master slave cables 
um, is four, uh, 12 to 14 volt. Um, so um, as we here needs a master slave for the UART uh, bus, um, you have here from the UART bus, it takes this uh, 12 volt uh, and, and there uh, go to this uh, master slave to power it. Insert the ESP32 and then we need the auto detect, uh, it's from me. So install this. This is basically nothing but a path through. So you could also uh, simply use B dongle would also do. Uh, but uh, the nice thing about this is that he, his firmware, he, it automatically detects the UART that you use uh, because when you bridge the RX and TX line. And that you would have to do here uh, on the board with this 12 volt very nearby and that's very dangerous. And therefore, really, I think you should make the setup as your, your car, your whatever stupid fun project you want. And then you should no longer need to touch that. And he detects this. Uh, I simply send as here certain characters back uh, when I receive them, and that is so I emulate as a bridging. And therefore, uh, this is only one. Uh, otherwise, it forwards it to the uh, to the Windows machine or Linux or whatever you do. And and so we need to install this. And so I think I could uh, keep. Is this even powered? Uh, uh, it's uploaded and so uh, I need the putty because um, he, he does not really support this um, stupid uh, Arduino um, terminal. So it's COM13 and now baud rate 150 because that's uh, the E332 forwarding the 9200 baud from uh, the, the board. If you use a USB uh, dongle, then you would need uh, 1900 200, but with my RV. Okay. Yeah, I get lots of garbage. Maybe it's because of these strange lines. Um, let's try to continue and now flash uh, the master. And it has stopped. So you see, that's it. We already have compiled it. So press F8. And that's another thing. In the beginning, um, you have to. I, uh, some this no reset is also there. I have here a, a switch uh, connected to ground. To ground, so can manually reset the board. Uh, or you pull the plug here of, of the uh, stealing dongle and insert it and hit F8 and, and some, at some time you are lucky and we have uploaded it. So I pull the plug and now I power it and here it is doing something. Uh, and the first step, I think, is uh, latch detection. So the, that the, keeps the power on. And therefore, all the LEDs are on and then they turn off. Uh, let's see, uh, COM is still sending lots of garbage. Let's turn it on. And yeah, it worked. <laughs> That's because um, here, this ESP32 did bridge uh, the RXTX, so it went on, waited uh, for the RXTX to uh, be uh, bridged, so it's sending out data and see if it comes back somewhere. And this was emulated by it, and then it now knows a uh, connection, and so it starts a nice user interface. So press enter. And then you, s uh, you should press one for detect all. And now it will. It wants to um, see the. I think the face, and we have to press yes. And yes, yeah, successful. So we hit enter, and now it's detecting the pins. So we press V W if it, if nothing is blinking. Uh, you see, I was too fast. So the red, this is the left one is the red one. So this is U for upper. Uh, still again, this was a green, uh, but we can cycle and uh, you now only, this is the red one. 
and the yeah, this is the middle one. It's the orange or blue. And it's a B. Uh, no buzzer because the buzzer is here, and so we could hit enter. Now it's detecting the voltage. Let's see if I reduce the voltage, uh, then it also reduces here and it says which is one is closest and closest is here the number nine so we press the number nine and enter again so now it's trying to detect this button here and and it wants me to push the button once release and nothing happened that's because um, this, this uh, hardware, the button can also work as a uh, hold, the latch, and it wrongly detected the hold uh, as to be the button. And now if I press here this E, uh, then it is uh, uh, switching the one and turns off and we get this garbage again, maybe of this, but it seems to work. And we turn it on again. Uh, Oh, press enter to continue. <laughs> That's uh, an, a nice change uh, by this nice guy. And well, I think now we have done it all. Uh, test motor rotation. That's nice. Um, so we make a plus. Yeah, and we see. And minus. So that's great. Enter back to main. So uh, what is currently missing, but is uh, an absolute necessity. <laughs> This UART bus, you see they are both uh, connected to the same UART and therefore they are slave IDs. Every board must be assigned a slave ID and right now um, it's the default one of one and, and we have to set it to something else uh, like uh, zero. And so let's go to the command seven command line interface. Let's try help and now see how can I set the slave ID. That's, I haven't done this yet, uh, uh, so here, uh, minute, minute. so it's it's only this uh, pure <laughs> Linux 1990 read and write, I think we have to write data, so V for V and now we have to uh, find the index, slave ID, 38, <laughs> so I think we have to V38, zero slave id is set to zero and now this has to be saved to the eprom uh, which couldn't ah yeah we have made changes and yes and now let's see again if the slave id has been saved so l for there it is okay so this board uh, you could put a label on it it's, it's slave id zero and um, i think we continue with this board, flash now the main firmware, because um, then this, when we flash the bin finder on this board, this will not react because it has already the, the main. And again, you see, uh, you finally, uh, the BDC, the brain degenerated consumer, you should only need to download the two binaries and, and then uh, flash it. So this uh, Kyle stuff is only for developers. Uh, uh, okay, here target is correct. So uh, let's hit F7. Okay, and now we uh, insert here the USB dongle and flash uh, the main firmware by pressing F8. Yeah, and <laughs> uh, this um, happens to me sometimes and I have not really found out uh, what to do against it. Uh, sometimes it helps here to, to press and no rest, uh, but mostly it does not help. Yeah, now it works. Okay, we now check in at the slave here. Yes, and we connect here the 12 volts so that it will go on and we can now uh, flash 
Yeah, that's it. So this time it worked. It did work. Pull the plug. And so we are having here uh, a pin fighter ready. Now let's see if the auto detect, yeah, it uploaded it. Then we need putty again. Mm, inactive, inactive. Uh, so we start session and we get this garbage. Um, don't know, it really might be because of this. And let's see if I now turn this on. You see this board will power on and here we have these LEDs uh, blinking um, going on and turn off because now it is detecting the latch here. Uh, but the, therefore there would have been a release here of the power which does not happen. Therefore it correctly detected uh, that this is a slave and went on with the bridging of waiting for the bridging. Uh, that was a flickering and yeah that worked because we already have here. Uh, the slave you see here and now you see we have to do it again <laughs> because here you might have uh, some other uh, um, uh, um, face uh, cables detected and here we have a buzzer and therefore it's different and uh, better do it again so press one and yes and be happy about this nice firmware <laughs> which successfully detected it and now it wants uh, the LEDs so this time I take care not here that's uh, red ah, you hear uh, um, I, he might uh, you um, <laughs> greetings to <laughs> to Asia uh, it could be a bit louder here but it's a buzzer and the buzzer has uh, character Z, uh, I think here, yeah, buzzer. And this is U for upper. And now only two remaining, the blue and the green. Enter. And here we don't really have a voltage. This time it does show one. <laughs> uh, but I think this is the first time I see maybe I've changed the suppress zero. And so it's set then enter and yeah it's a slave so it's not wanting to take the button and so yes we want to save it but uh, again 35 i think was the number uh go to the command line and uh, but he al al already said that he's going to do this in the in the automatic no it's not 35 slave id 38 is one but okay we can leave it to one <laughs> but uh yeah so you you could change it and so we are done uh, uh, we can test the motor rotation finally uh, and yes it's working fine and so we can pull the plug because we no longer need it and then we go back to the main binary and we simply here insert the, uh, the ST-Link dongle and hit F8 and it works. And now we have both of them, ID0, ID1. Uh, let's turn it off and on again. Here now both showing the battery voltage. Let's see if it really, uh, if I decrease it. You see, no, it's not really, it's only the, the master is having the voltage. Uh, but okay, uh, so now we uh, insert the ESP32 again and we can flash the uh, test speed. And here we are. So now why isn't the first motor spinning? Let's restart. Okay, for some reason. And why now did... Yeah, that's because uh, the battery voltage is set to 24 volt. Uh, might be a nice uh, thing just to show you. So let's first uh, try again. You see, but uh, here now if some big torque, then here the... Okay, I increase it to three amps, 
uh, to not get uh, degrees here below 24 volt, but you might want to disable it. And therefore, I have uh, introduced. Uh, this is the main remote bus. I have a config here. So now you cannot only send uh, speed commands, you also can send the, uh, here the, the battery. And that's in the test serial code. Uh, yeah, so here B, B, BH would be B high or bad low and B low. So I now here go to the console and tip BL zero and um, then it should be safe. Let's see. So this is a bit, don't wonder why, because now it should uh, start, uh, no longer sh start to show the battery. Don't really know. And here with L, mm, one, zero, you can set the lock to receive, to only show the log data of zero. And I think with L minus one, uh, no, with L three, you can disable it because uh, there is no ID three. That's because you see now be a low, uh, you, you can see it's sending the slave 42 and, and let's change the uh, battery high to 32. You can also change the mode. And I think this is a PBM mode and you can change it to the sign mode. This firmware, it does not have the FOC yet because uh, this uh, board is so cheap hardware that it does not have uh, phase currents, but you can still do sinusoidal and then it has a better torque and it's more smooth and silent. And that's why here uh, this motor is sometimes stopping because uh, the PBM is, is too low. And there are uh, four modes and um, two is the sign mode and voltage. So let's send it and we don't see anything. Uh, let's go to zero. Oh no, this is a PVM. And you see now it's really a problem. So let's go back to the M's. Okay, so by now the sign mode is the default one. But it also had a speed mode. And so let's go to M3 and then it interprets the speed as uh, the, 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 the thing you send as a speed. And then it really, you see, now it's setting a speed. Uh, so let's turn on the lock again. You see here the speed you send is basically the speed that you receive here. And you see, I only go to 300 and 300 PVM was a bit too, too less, but the speed 300, now that works. So uh, let's go to the mode one. That is the old commutation with speed. And uh, you see that's having problems here because it's, it's very hard. Um, uh, let's quickly, uh, now you see now it has turned off again because see the battery voltage. Uh, so go back to sign mode and that's why I it, uh, introduced here this uh, config to now show you really the differences between speed and sign and, and so you can really do this uh, dynamically. You can change the, the battery voltage here which does affect here the, the, uh, the, the LED showing monitor and um, I also added uh, the change of the slave ID. And I, I just demonstrated now, you see, I, I, I can direct the message on to one. So I'm directing the message to the ID two and set uh, it to, to one and set it to two, which uh, should turn off this motor. And it did not work. So let's turn it off and on again. And so that has, maybe he has already removed this feature. Now nah, here yeah, it's disabled. <laughs> yeah, ah, so now, um, 
Yeah, to demonstrate it because, um, but I agree that it's uh, better really um, to, to, to have it, but you see ID zero and one. Uh, so let's activate it again and we flash it to this. And so now turn it on. <laughs> Try again. We direct it to the ID 2 and we set the slave ID to, to 1 and we direct it to 2. And you see, it's gone. And you see, my, it was my old approach that you have one firmware and you for all the boards and then you connect them and they have a default ID of zero and you connect them one by one and when you have connected them then you set it to two or three or four and if it's broken then you just take a new one from the shelf, insert it, it will be zero which is unique because you always set it to something different and then you set it to the, uh, to the one um, of... Uh, the replacement yeah but as I s said let's turn this off uh, with the face cables something could be different and even if it's the same board uh, better do the pin finder again and, and so now you see now we have to set this back so uh, we direct it to two and we set the slave ID to one and then uh, this uh, should should wake up <laughs> and if not then it was <laughs> didn't work I only send it to the first so and let's say I would have to send it here to uh, the, all the lower three now I think the message that I only direct to ID uh, 2 uh, is, is, is sent and you see there it is back again <laughs> okay that's it I think uh, again, you see, I, I, I understand what he, why he um, does only want to have two binaries and you have to do the pin finding again and I just demonstrated, let's turn it off, uh, you can connect it uh, as, as you finally will use it. You, you for some reason have some garbage on the RX line which might be here but yeah, I did need the diodes you, maybe you can usually with only two modes same boards uh, the diodes were not needed but in this case uh, you have them and then you uh, you see you also see really data that is sent so this is quite nice um, and um, his pin finder is, is it's nice. Um, you see, I don't like the command line the interface. This, so um, it would be nice to have the, the slave ID to be set on the on the main user interface. But uh, this is uh, pure sign. Uh, si pure sign. Uh, it, it's really uh, better than. So now you can be happy if you. You finally, you can be happy if you have a MM32 board and not a, a GD32 board. And just before, he, before him, it really, if you had a MM32, then game over. <laughs> and now it's, it's really, uh, you have a better, better board. And uh, it's, it's the cheapest one. And so in the future, there will be lots of, uh, there are already lots of different ones. And, and yeah. Okay, you see. You can give feedback uh, if you think uh, that this idea to dynamically change the slave IDs is, is, is a good idea or not. Uh, and and is the battery uh, low and high, I think, is a good idea because with my um, solar camper, when I uh, want to save battery uh, and it's, it's flat, I have solar energy enough, then I don't want to charge the battery to full. And, and or I, if I don't want to discharge it, it's so uh, it's, then I really dynamically uh, not not at runtime, but the next day, uh, by, by software um, to change uh, the, the low voltage cut off, and, and so. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Bye bye.